Hey everyone, Khalid here. Welcome back to Clinical Physio. In today's video, we're going to show you the Hoffman's test and the Tromner test. These tests are used to look for signs of an upper motor neuron lesion. More on that in a second. First of all, how do we do the tests? So what you're going to do is repeat this test on both your patient's right hands and the left hands, and it all involves the middle finger. The way we do this test is we stabilize our patient's middle finger at the distal interphalangeal joint. So just here, we're gonna stabilize that in our hand and we wanna make sure that the patient's thumb and index finger are unobstructed so that they can move easily. The way we do Hoffman's test, first of all, is we stabilize at the distal interphalangeal joint and the examiner is going to flick downwards on the nail bed of the patients. They're flicking the distal phalanx downwards. What we're looking for here is the movement at the thumb and index finger. A negative result on this test is if the thumb and index finger stay in the same position. A positive is if the thumb and index finger start to move towards each other. So for example, if I was to flick downwards, if the thumb and index finger start to move towards each other, as we're demonstrating here, that would be a positive result. So the opposite of this is Tromner's test. It's done in almost the same way, but in a different direction. Once again, we're gonna stabilize at the distal interphalangeal joint, but this time, instead of flicking downwards on the nail bed, we're going to flick upwards. We're going to flick the distal phalanx upwards of the patient. The result is exactly the same. A negative result would be where there's no movement of the thumb and index finger, and a positive result would be if I flick the distal phalanx upwards, you get that same movement of the thumb and the index finger towards each other. So, Hoffman's test, flick down, Tromner's test, flick up. What are we doing these tests for? Well, we're looking for signs of an upper motor neuron lesion, which is a lesion or a pathology of the brain and or the spinal cord. So you might be thinking about things like a patient who has multiple sclerosis or something like a brain tumor. But one of the other most common reasons to do this test is to look for signs of cervical myelopathy, where we have a spinal cord compression within the cervical spine, because that compression at the cervical spine will mean a loss of conduction of messages all the way down the rest of the spinal cord. So, Possible symptoms that your patient may have for any of those different conditions may include bilateral sensation changes in the arms or the legs, such as bilateral numbness or bilateral pins and needles, a loss of power in either the arms or the legs, so that could look like clumsiness in the hands, it could even be in just one hand, or it might be a loss of power in the legs, it might be gait disturbance, it might be a loss of balance in the legs, a loss of control of the legs, it could even include bowel or bladder changes. There are lots of different symptoms that could be caused by an upper motor neuron lesion. So, for any of your patients who have those kind of signs, you always want to be doing tests like these to look for signs of an upper motor neuron lesion. And just to say other tests that you could also use to look for signs of an upper motor ne neuron lesion might include Babinski's test and clonus testing. So make sure to do all of those tests in a cluster to look for your signs of an upper motor neuron lesion. Thank you so much for watching. Really hope you've enjoyed this video. Look forward to seeing you soon here on Clinical Physio.